What's going on guys? In this video, we're not going to be doing a passage breakdown. We're just going to go through some discrete questions. Okay, these are really good practice for the MCAT. All right, so do the questions on your own first, and then I'm going to go ahead and explain, you know, how to get the answer. Okay, so this is a question 44, 45, 46, 47. Okay, we got four good questions. Pause it whenever you need to, write down your answers, and We'll see where you went right and we'll see where you went wrong. Okay, I'm gonna go through these quick. You know, when you're doing the pseudo discrete or the discrete questions, you wanna do them quick, efficient. All right, so let's begin. A ray of light, a ray of white light moves through the air and strikes the surface of water in a beaker. The index of refraction of the water is 1.33 and the angle of incidence is 30 degrees. All the following are true except the angle of reflection is 30 degrees. This is true. Okay, this is true. The angle of reflection, or I'm gonna go to the whiteboard real quick and just explain it to you guys, okay? So this is what's going on here. All right, you have a ray of light. Here is the air, put A for air. Here is the water, all right? The reflection is just this. It goes and it gets reflected, that's it. So if this is 30 degrees, the reflection is gonna be 30 degrees. Since we're going from a low to a high index of refraction, instead of the light traveling straight through like this, we're gonna have some type of bending. All right, since we're going from one to 1.3, a low to a high, we're gonna be bending towards the normal. All right, from low to high, you go towards the normal. So we're not gonna bend the light this way. We're gonna bend it towards the normal. So this way more over here, more towards the normal. This is the normal. This line up here, the straight vertical line is the normal. So that's how it's gonna happen. All right, the way I remember it, and the way you can remember it as well, I mean, I'm pretty weird, so I make weird mnemonics. So we're gonna go from low to a high index of refraction. If we're going from low to high, we're gonna go towards. All right, the way I like to remember it is that the letter H here goes with the high letter D here. So low to high to word. That's how I remember it. So if you have any better ones, <laughs> comment it down below. I'd love to hear it. So this is true. The angle of refraction is 30 degrees. No, the angle of refraction will be some type of angle that's going towards the normal. It's going to change. It's not going to be 30 degrees. So two is false. It's not true. Three, total internal reflection will result depending on the critical angle. This is what total internal reflection is, all right? It's when you have your incident angle coming in, okay? And the bending of light, all right? The refraction of light is so great that it will refract from here where it's supposed to go, okay? This is without refraction. It's gonna bend all the way to where it's 90 degrees. So it's gonna bend more away from the normal to eventually when it's 90 degrees like this. And the only way we can bend this way away from the normal is if we're going from an index of refraction that's high, okay, 1.3, to an index of refraction that's low. All right, that's the only way. So if we're coming in here, all right, let's say this is going like this. All right, if we're coming in here, instead of going through here, we're refracting. So we're gonna be bending it away from the normal like this. This is the critical angle, okay? And this only happens when you're going from a high index of refraction to a low index of refraction. And in this case, we're going from a low index of refraction to a high index of refraction. So three is false, two is false, okay? One is correct, so the answer is C. Let's keep going, boom. Which of the following correctly describes the orbital hybridization of XEF4 and NH3 respectively? Okay, oral hybridization, it's pretty easy stuff, guys. Gen Chem, you should know this, all right? The way I like to do this, whenever I see some hybridization questions, I always just think, find the valence electron. Find the valence electrons, okay? What does that mean? Well, Xe F4, all right? We have Xe with four fluorine atoms, all right? So let's say we have four fluorine atoms. Let's just put it like this for now, all right? What is the valence electrons? How many valence electrons does Xe have? And Xe, I think, is um, 
neon, I think. I don't know. XE is all right. But how many van electrons does XE have? XE has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It has eight valence electrons, okay? Eight valence electrons. Over here, I just drew, only shows four, okay? It shows one, one, two, three, four. I'm missing four more electrons. And the way I'm gonna put these electrons is through lone pairs. So I'm gonna put a lone pair, one here, okay? And another lone pair of electrons here. Now, if I count a total, I have the valence electron amount. I have four from the bond. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm happy. Now that he's happy, in order to fulfill these uh, eight things that are attached to the XE, I have to have S, P, 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 that's four. I'm also gonna be needing D2. So D, D. All right, we're okay, we're filled up, that's what it is. It's gonna be SP3, D2. And then for NH3, it's gonna be SP3. We do the same exact thing that I did there. Okay, so N bonded to three different hydrogens. Okay, also guys, I mean, this is probably not how it looks like. I don't know if this is how it's supposed to look like, but you don't have to know specifically, you know, the shape. All right, but that's how, that's how generally it could look like, okay? So NH3, three things here. Valence electrons, nitrogen has five valence electrons. How many do we have right now? One, two, three, okay? So we need two electrons to fulfill, and we do this by adding a lone pair. So now we have one, two, three, four, five. We're happy here. We're bonded to four different things, and in order to fulfill that, we need S, P, P, P. One, two, three, four. All fulfilled. S, P, three for NH3. Bam. So S, P, three, D, two for X, E, F, four and sp3 for nh3 let's keep going the transcription factor ap1 is a heterodimer consisting of c jun and c fos c jun and c fos are soluble proteins okay they're proteins that can be localized to either the cytosol or nucleus of a cell c jun and c fos dimerize through a leucine zipper motif in a leucine zipper motif, every seven amino acid residues or two full turns of an alpha helix are leucine residues. Leucine and other amino acids on one face of the helix come together to form an opposite alpha helix that's a similar arrangement of leucine and other amino acids. Which solvent would be least favorable for a CFOS slash C John dimerization? Okay, <clears throat> just looking at this right away. I can just assume that the answer is hexane. Why? Well, if we look at the properties of solvents, okay, think about what a solvent does, all right? Solutes are dissolved in solvents, okay? Ethanol and water are both polar solvents. So since these two are the same, they're wrong. Okay, it's an MCAT test taking strategy there. If two things are very similar, they're both wrong. And phosphate buffered saline, that's that's a buffer. You know, it's, it's pretty favorable for a lot of things. All right. Also, I wouldn't consider that a solvent, so that's just not a good answer. Okay. It is favorable to have this. Okay. It is favorable to use a buffer whenever you're doing any type of reaction. Okay. So the answer for possible emission is hexane. Also, okay, if you want to go more of the question, I'm proving it through the question stem. All right, this is what happens if we would have a hexane. All right, this protein, okay, it interacts by these zipper motifs. Okay, say that this is a zipper here. All right, we have one protein here. Let's say it's CFOS and then C, what's the other one? C June. All right, when they dimerize, dimerizing means two proteins coming together. Okay, so they're dimerizing here, they form a pair of dimers. These are dimers, okay? They do this through the leucines over here, 
okay? And then they link in a way that's called a leucine zipper motif, okay? If we dissolve this in hexane in something that's nonpolar, oh, I spelled nonpolar wrong, okay? Something that's nonpolar, that's hydrophobic, okay? Leucine is hydrophobic. So what do you think is gonna happen if we dissolve this in something that's nonpolar? All right, this is not, this interaction here is not going to happen. If we, do, so if, we, yeah, if we dissolve this in hexane, this interaction here is not going to happen. Instead, what's going to happen is that these nonpolar hydrophobic residues of leucine, instead of acting with the other leucine over here, they're going to act with a solvent. So they're going to interact with some hexane here, some hexane here, and then the other protein, those leucines are going to interact with other hexane, more hexane, more hexane. And now they're far apart. They can't dimerize. The hexane took the place of the protein that was needed to make the dimer. So hexane is not a favorable solvent for this. Therefore, the answer is also A. The association constant Ka of epithelial growth factor receptor binding to the epithelial growth factor is 5.61 times 10 to the 6. What is the K equiv of EGFR plus EGF, EGFR to EGF? Okay, this is easy, <clears throat> very easy. KA, KB, KSP, KW, KD, they're all, they all mean the same thing. They don't mean specifically the same thing in the context of how they're used, but they're all equal to products over reactants. Okay, and that's what it is. So Ka, Kb, Kd, Ksp. Okay, it's always products over reactants. Okay, the only one that's not products over reactants is the rate law. The rate law. That one you have to determine when you have the table. Remember, you have a table here, blah, blah, blah. All right, and then you see, oh, this one's 0, 2, 4, and this one else is like, zero one two and then you got to find the reaction rate okay the rate law is determined experimentally the ka kb kw okay all those are determined by looking at the products and reactants so because ka is the same thing as k equiv okay they are the same so 5.61 times 10 to the 6 ka is equal to 5.61 times 10 to the 6 of k equiv all right and let's check if we got everything right. 44C, correct. A, correct. There's the explanation if you guys want to read. Correct, hexane. And A, correct, the same thing. Okay. All right, as always, guys, comment down below, subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video.